There we go. Attention YouTube reviewer, the following video is filmed on a private gun range by a firearms expert. All firearms are handled responsibly and at no point are any bystanders present or ever at risk. The following video also contains no footage of full auto firearms, bump stocks, firearm modifications, or firearm ammunition cells as defined by YouTube's community guidelines. This includes our outro. Welcome back guys. Today we're doing a handgun review and it's gonna be kind of short because well, it's a handgun um, and it's a Breda 92. A lot of people know about the Breda 92, but this specific one is the FS, uh, also called, I guess the Enox, which is the stainless steel version of it. Nice little gun, um, all stainless steel for the, all the major metal components, aluminum frame. So you have this kind of uh, almost a matte stainless steel and then uh, this painted uh, or almost powder coated finish aluminum uh, frame ends up being really nice, nicely balanced, light gun. Uh, now, this is an Italian made Beretta and uh, not an American made one. So take that as you will. I've heard uh, things about the American made Berettas, not a ton. Um, but this is a nice little gun. Generally, when you buy these, you get two extra mags, which if you look here, uh, these two match. This one does not. I'm not sure why that is um, out of this gun. I did not purchase this gun. It was uh, more or less, uh, I inherited it. So, a relatively nice gun, very well handling. Uh, my main complaint with this particular gun is uh, the sights, and we'll get to that in a minute. But before we get into that, let's talk about today's uh, sponsor for this video, and that's going to be Gunflower. So Gunflower reached out to me, uh, and they wanted me to check out this drop leg holster. And uh, for me, I'm, I like drop leg holsters a lot more than I normally like belt holsters, and uh, you know, that is uh, one of the things. So I was kind of interested in checking this out. Um, now for this specific drop leg holster here, um, it has a couple different adjustments on it. You can actually take off the belt and set it up real high so it sits higher on your waist as you're just gonna see in the video here. And uh, it is a universal holster so this fits a lot of guns. So the Beretta 92 actually fits really nice in there. You got your nice release right there. Press in, release it, you good, that and it holds on to the actual trigger guard. Some firearms, it fits a little bit tighter on, for instance, like my SAR K2. It, uh, because of the width of the trigger guard, you really have to press the button a little bit more, but otherwise than that, good holster. Uh, they, uh, I'll, I'll post on the screen right now what this one runs. I think it's a little over a hundred bucks. I do really like the holster itself. You can actually, <clears throat> take it off like so and I assume that there is a uh, a belt uh, belt over the waist holster that can adjust this that goes with that and you do have an adjustment here so you can adjust your angle of the holster itself that's real nice and then it has a two round mag uh, holder on it as well 
So thanks to Gun uh, to Gunflyer for sending this over for us to test and use for this uh, couple handgun series that I'm going to be doing. I'm uh, probably going to use this with any handgun that actually fits in this here, going out for a drop leg holster. Okay, now that we're back, let's talk a little bit more about it. So my main gripe with the 92FS is actually the sights um, for me. Uh, I... <sighs> This gun here, I just, I cannot get a good grasp of where the sights are for it. And you can see in the video, I did a lot of misses with this gun, which at the range I'm shooting at is kind of unusual for me. Uh, I'm usually pretty good at that range and distance, but something about these sights on this gun just, they don't really work for me. So for instance, when I'm looking through the sights like this, I got it out uh, where I want. The front post actually sits very uh, in the center of this U-notch, but it doesn't take up the whole U-notch. You have space on each side. <clears throat> so for me, that was creating some accuracy problems for me specifically, and that's me. I don't have a ton of uh, range time on this particular gun. I think I have about 100 rounds, give or take, through it. Uh, functionally, it works perfectly fine. The only malfunction that I had was actually with uh, some aluminum, uh, no, it was still case Winchester, or uh, I think it was still case Winchester that I used, That's which you can see right here loading. Fuck. Oop. Got us a jam there. Pretty sure it's just from, and it was the last one too. Those rounds actually had a bit of problem going inside of these magazines. These mags are rated for 15 rounds, but those steel case, uh, they were kind of almost gritty filling and they really caught up inside of the magazines. And I think one mag I was only able to get like 12 in and then the other one I was able to get like 13. But uh, regular brass, perfectly fine. <laughs> now, something that's different about the uh, the FS versus the, uh, the 92, uh, M or the uh, M2, uh, the other Beretta models, is a lot of parts on here are actually steel. So for instance, the guide rod is stainless steel, the uh, mag release is stainless steel, trigger is stainless steel, and the lanyard is stainless steel. And from my understanding, on some of the other Beretta models, those are plastic. So that's really nice there as well. Another nice feature that the uh, M9 has, it actually has a um, round in the chamber indicator and it's part of the extractor so see i got a empty spent case here i'm just gonna drop you in like so and if you look real close right here that extractor is raised up just a little bit and there's actually red paint just on the inside of that where you can see it so that's kind of a neat little feature i do like guns that have um, a chamber indicator now this is a single double action gun. So on a single action shot here, we have a reel, and once again, we are clear. We have a relatively nice trigger, but we do have this little bit of take up here, and we hit a wall. And as you can see, you can see this little trigger indicator starts coming up here. So we hit a wall, and then it's a clean break. So you only have that one wall. Now for the double action trigger, well, let's do the reset first. So fire. Oh, what is this? We don't have a hammer lock on the reset here. You have to rack the slide for it to reset and lock the hammer, which is a little interesting. So let's do that reset. Creep, creep, creep. Oh, right there's the reset and then you got about two millimeters to the wall and there we go again now let's do that double action so in double action you have a two millimeters of slop you know, long heavy double to a break so there's not a wall it's just once you start with that there you get that and then you hear that's kind of like a half cock and it leaves right there but once you get to that half cock it's just all the way through until you get to the break. So, interesting how that works there. Now, alrighty, what do you think so far? 
pretty good size. I mean, I've shot a lot of MS, so I'm curious to see how the recoil feels on it. I've never shot a Breda, so it should be fun. All righty. You're gonna have to rack her. She's not, uh, not racked. There you go. There we go. The trigger pull felt weird because it like it like lagged a second. Yeah, it's got a, a really long squishy section before you hit the wall, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a little takes some getting used to. When I was first shooting it a couple times there, uh, I was like, wait a minute, what the? Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought the safety was on. Yeah. Because it felt like I had almost a full pull of trigger before it was doing anything. But it's just that wall is way back there. Right. There is something interesting about this gun here, and that is the fact that it borrowed very heavily from the Warther PP, uh, um, uh, man, the, the P1 and the P38. So if you look at the top of them, they are extremely similar, and they got a little bit more similar on the inside. So let's take this down, and uh, we'll show you the differences. So first of all, for takedown, what's similar is you have this little takedown lever here toward on the frame. On the Beretta, it's right here above the trigger guard. It's just forward of the trigger guard on the P1. So you uh, have to press this little button here. You press this in and there's like a little catch there and then you can rotate this down. Once you rotate it down, your slide is free. Now it is under a little bit of spring pressure. So if you don't have it supported, sometimes these can fly off and then you take it off just like so. Now on the P1 here or the P38, you don't have that, that button to push, but you do have to bring the slide back ever so slightly to get it to where it wants to go. So you got to take it back just a hair so you can rotate that off and then you have to take the mag out on the P1. This thing always gives me a little bit of trouble for some reason. We'll return after these messages. Do you hate energy drinks that taste too strong, have artificial sweeteners, or tons of syrup in them, tons of caffeine, makes you jittery, a little, you know, crackheady like? Well, guess who you're gonna, probably gonna like? Liquid Freedom Energy by Blood of Tyrants. These guys have been working here with the partners, uh, been working here with the channel here for about a month now. Um, started just before the New Mexico trip when I introduced them up on the mountain. Now, this is a non-carbonated, non-artificially sweetened, non-syrup sweetened uh, energy drink with low caffeine at about 100 milligrams. Uh, and it's all sweetened with uh, stevia and monk fruit extract. So good natural sweeteners, but this is not an overly sweet product. It is uh, actually pretty mild. It tastes just like a slightly sweetened raspberry tea, which I like. Personally, I'm a lemon tea guy. Hopefully they'll come out with a sweet lemon tea in the future. I live in Texas, so sue me the South. But anyways, these guys are really great. Their parent company is uh, Blood of Tyrants. They make wine as well, along with some cool little accessories and stuff like that. I'm going to have the link right here on the screen along with a QR code. So please go check out the people who support us and support them because they support us. And well, it's liquid freedom. What more do you want? Freedom. So anyways, guys, let's get back to the content. All right, guys, it's time for our autism break. Um, we got our three targets here. We're gonna be shooting with three different cartridges, 45 ACP with a hollow point, nine mil hollow point, and of course, 760 by 54R, full metal jacket out of the Mosin. But this uh, little segment here is sponsored by, let's get into some blowing up some cans and some water. Okay, first up, Black Talon, nine mil.
Okay, so that's what I forget. So on the P1, it's something I always forget about. It's the hammer has to be down in order for it to uh, release. So you take it back just a little bit, rotate it all the way forward, and there's a little cut there, and then you could slide it straight forward. Now, that's not where the similarities end. Um, on the, uh, the, the actual frames itself, there's not a whole lot similar here. Um, really, the, uh, the ejector is about in the same spot. Both uh, double action, but that's really about it as far as the frames themselves. Everything else that's similar is up here in the actual slides. So first of all, you can see they both have this similar cut exposed barrel slide. Of course, the P1 has a full length or a long exposed barrel. Um, and the uh, recoil spring on the Beretta is inside the slide while on the P1 is built into the frame. Now there's that stainless uh, guide rod I was telling you about a little while ago. Now, the similarities are here in the locking mechanism. These both use, you see the uh, P1 barrel just slides straight forward out of the slide while the Beretta, you have to actually press this in to unlock it and then you can lift it out and take it out. Now, they use a near identical locking mechanism. It functions the exact same way. So when the slide in the barrel comes back, this plunger right here smacks against the frame and then pushes that down, locks the barrel. On the P1, it works the exact same way as it comes back, smacks the frame, presses this down and locks the action. Really neat little setup as far as how the guns work. So let me slap these back together. So to put the <clears throat> 92 back together, you just take your barrel down through here. And then you see there's a little cutout right here in the slide for that locking piece like that to go. And then you have to get it to lock in like so. Then you can put your recoil spring back in and slide on your slide. Now, I'm saying. So sometimes you have to make sure that this is in the exact same spot because if it's slightly off, sometimes it won't lock. And unlike on the P1, you don't have to press down the ejector to get the slide to go on. You just go on all the way, push back just a little bit, and boom, you are good to go. Now, when you rack the uh, the Beretta, you can see the serrations right here above the uh, safety. It is possible to accidentally flip it down into safe while racking. Depends on how you rack it. If you rack it like that, not a big deal. Like that, I can see how it'd be possible to go ahead and flip that safety. And as you see, it has a decocker in it. So when you decock it, it goes down. And of course, it actually sucks in the firing pin in such a way. So if you look here, uh, you know what? It's gonna be easier to show you if I disassemble it again. Um, get the right grip on it here. Okay. So when you put it into safety, you see your, your, uh, your firing pin right there. When you flip into safety, it actually flips up the firing pin up and out of the way. So I believe if I'm correct, this has a two piece firing pin. So you have an anvil right there that's built into the safety that actually rotates, up, uh, rotates up out of the way. Then you have a spring loaded firing pin. Now, I'm not sure what the exact um, name of this system is as far as the um, firing pin goes, but I always call it an over travel system. And what I, the reason I say that is because the way the firing pin is, it's spring loaded. So say you see that anvil right there on the firing pin. If I push that all the way flat, the firing pin does not protrude out 
for, far enough to touch a cartridge. So basically what happens when the hammer strikes that anvil, which as you can see the anvil sticks out ever so slightly, like, like a half of a millimeter, it sticks out past that edge. So when the hammer comes out and strikes that anvil, the kinetic energy transfers from the hammer into that anvil, which then strikes the firing pin and causes the fire pin to move forward overcoming the spring pressure of the firing pin spring and gives it enough energy to travel far enough forward to smack the actual cartridge. Now, the reason why that's a good system because that means this gun is relatively drop safe. So if your hammer is down and you drop the gun and you somehow manage to hit it perfectly on the hammer, the hammer is already resting on this flat surface right here and that firing pin is already or that anvil is already depressed all the way but even though that anvil may be touching the actual firing pin at that point the firing pin is not protruding out the front of the slide up against the cartridge so it's very unlikely that without the hammer actually moving and that anvil being out extruded all the way out towards the back that there's gonna be enough kinetic energy from hitting the ground like that to transfer through a stationary hammer into the stationary anvil and into the stationary firing pin to create enough uh, energy to overcome the spring and trigger the cartridge. So it's relatively drop safe with a cartridge in the chamber with this type of firing pin. Now, if this was a free floating firing pin with no spring, different situation, but because it has a spring, it's a relatively safe system to carry with one in the chamber if that is your jam. Some people don't, some people do. Personally, I carry with one in the chamber, but only on guns that I know have that type of firing pin system because I know they are relatively drop safe. Now, again, sometimes something just does not line up perfectly in here. Okay, let's do a speed test. And you have to kind of wiggle stuff around. And there it goes. And it's ready to go. But overall, very, very nice little gun. Uh, one of the complaints about these is the grips uh, being a little wide. And I, I have small hands. Um, as many people have commented, I have like baby kid hands. But for me, it's not so bad. I wouldn't mind it being a little bit thinner, but these are already pretty thin as you can see as it is, but they do have thinner grips. So not bad, pretty good. So another thing that uh, this gun does get some complaints about on it is, uh, well, for one, it doesn't have ambi controls on it. And uh, so, you know, you don't have an ambi mag release like that there. Uh, which you know would be kind of cool and I don't imagine it would be too hard to swap this over I mean they Beretta all the 92s and the uh, the M's they all have pretty much the same frame layout stuff like this so it should be possible uh, and another thing that people complain about is the um, the controls if you have smaller hands like mine with how thick the grip is some of the controls can be hard to reach and as you can see I cannot reach personally any of the controls with my right thumb. Um, however, if I am shooting like this, it's not so hard to, like say if I have, if I just did a reload, you know, I'll just with my right thumb, or if I'm going to drop the mag as I'm coming down, drop with my uh, left thumb right there, or if I'm gonna be going from uh, safe to fire, like that you know if you use your, your your left thumb then it's not that bad but that will take some training and practice to get used to uh, as far as getting used to the controls if you have a gun that you're used to being able to swap everything with your right thumb or your index finger um, which as you can see there's no mag release on the uh, slide release on the front for the right finger even though as you can see there is room for it um, you know, you could have it right there and then there's no ambi, um, mag release. Now for me, I'm not, I don't care about the mag release unless you're a lefty. If you're a lefty, it's not a problem. If you're a right-handed, 
then you could accidentally drop your your uh, your mag by accident with your right hand if you got it because your fingers are over that mag release. So not that big a deal, but it is a complaint by some people. So I do relatively like this gun. The only thing I do not like is, to be honest, the sights. Now the front sight is not adjustable or changeable in any way. It is a milled part of the uh, the slide itself. The rear uh, sight on the other end is indeed um, changeable. It can be drifted in and out. Um, you have to put it into safe and if you put it into safe then you can actually drift it out either direction. Um, so that's good. So if you have a sight post tool you can drift that out and change it yourself. I may look to see if there's one that's got a thinner notch, uh, U-notch in the back. That way it takes up the space for that front sight. And for me, that would be a little bit better. And uh, I don't know why, but I always seem to be more accurate with a notch sight setup where the front post completely takes up the U. So once I swap that out, I imagine I'll probably be more accurate with this particular gun. Generally, all the guns that I have that have that tight notch, I'm pretty good with. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything on the 92FS uh, stainless steel. Um, neat little gun. Uh, these, I'm gonna put on the screen with these are running right now. I wanna say I read somewhere a while back that Beretta was talking about discontinuing all their stainless models. I don't know if that's 100% true or if they went through with that but uh, these are still on the market. Now, there is something I would like to do with this particular gun, and to be honest, I would like to get a second one, a clone uh, a copy of this gun here, because there is a uh, gun from an anime called Black Lagoon that I would like to clone, and uh, the, I guess, so, uh, second main character, uh, supporting cast, uh, you know, uh, in that show has two bread and 92s that are stainless steels, or they're chrome, doesn't specify in the show, but they have a beautiful mother of pearl or abalone um, uh, or ivory pistol grips with a skull and two cutlasses on each side. And just a neat, neat looking gun. I'll put a picture right here. But, you know, I would like to actually get another one of these and make a clone of that because I do like uh, collecting guns that I see in media and anime and stuff like that. So, but yeah, anyways, guys, that's it. Beretta 92 FS stainless steel, also known as the, uh, what is it, the Equin, Equinox, whatever. But on the gun, it's just called the Beretta 92 FS. There's no other name on this particular one. I don't know how old this gun is specifically and if there were later models that had any other naming on it, but this one is just the FS stainless. So anyways, guys, y'all have a good one. I'll see y'all next time on the next review. Oh, by the way, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff.